Apparently I can't talk today. What's going on guys? Let's do some double battles here on Battle Spot. So as you can see, we've, uh, we've jumped up a little bit since October. Um, currently rank 10 on Battle Spot, and hopefully we can go a little bit further with it. So we found our first opponent already, and let's see what they got. So we have Urshifu, Rillaboom, Limscott, Decidueye, Incineroar, and what looks to be male in B. This guy's got three grass types on his team. I think Heatran likes that a lot. We will have to be weary of the Urshifu, but I have Whimsicott. Um, it's only attacking move as Moonblast. The other three moves are all uh, status based, so Whimsicott should be able to handle Urshifu pretty good. I think we will bring I think we'll bring Lapras in the back to handle Incineroar, and I think we will put Corsola in the back as well. So let's see how this goes. Rillaboom and Whimsicott. I'm expecting a potential fake out out of the Rillaboom into either Whimsicott or Heatran. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double protect with the logic being this way um, Heatran can attack with both of Heat Wave, but Whimsicott getting faked out could be bad and there's an off chance that my opponent could either use a Max Knuckle uh, Drain Punch or a high horsepower slash max break into Heatran, which I do not want to take a four times a uh, week uh, ground hit to Heatran and lose it very early on. But the nice thing about this Heatran too is I do have it holding the Sugar Berry to reduce super effective damage from ground type attacks on the off case that I do have to take one. The way how the EVs into my Heatran are uh, distributed, uh, it can survive um, an Earthquake or a uh, Max Quake from Landorus. Oh, looks like it's uh, just protect all the way around. I just watched uh, all three of them go. Um, luckily, we dodged the taunt off of uh, the opponent's Whimsicott, which could have been bad for mine. So we are going to try to get the Tailwind up. We are timid Whimsicott, but... If my opponent is also timid Whimsicott, I could... Oh, never mind. Uh, but the idea being was, like, my opponent could have just set speed uh, or taunted by potentially winning a speed tie with against my Whimsicott. So we got some big damage off of that Heat Wave from Heatran, which should not be too, too surprising. The Real Loom's going for a U-turn. I'm expecting Incineroar here. For a potential fake out. So, champion so far. So basically, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to protect with Heatran, but I think I'm going to have Whimsicott switch out just to be on the safe side. My opponent's Whimsicott uh, has very little HP. There's realistically nothing it can do to my Heatran that I'm too worried about. And basically, I just want to preserve my own uh, Whimscott right now. So we're going to bring in Lapras here. Lapras is very bulky. And this Lapras uh, has Sheer Cold uh, for a base 140 G-Max Resonance. Uh, it also has Freeze Drive for any water types. And then it just has Hydro Pump. Pretty generic Lapras, but... Uh, it's done me some good. So there was the fake out. And into taunt as well into Lapras, so switching out uh, Wounds Cup was definitely my best bet right there. Lapras is gonna heal up a little bit, so basically it's only taking six HP damage out of 
237. After the little recovery off of the grassy terrain, I think that's a more than fair trade for keeping Whimsicott alive. And I think I think we're actually going to Earth Power into the Incineroar and freeze dry into the Whimsicott. If this Whimsicott leech seeds my oh it's Cotton Sword okay, so my speed is going to be cut in half, but that's okay. Uh, I can easily uh, reset that with Tailwind. Um, and I can switch out my Pokemon as well. Parting Shot's going to be a little bit annoying. Uh, dropping Lapras's attack and special attack, but Lapras is going after that Whimsicott, which has very little HP to begin with, so I'm not too, too worried about that. So in comes Decidueye, and let's see what Decidueye wants to do. It's also going to take that Earth Power rather nicely, but that's okay. We got a special defense drop, which is going to be big, because if I decide to Heat Wave, that big damage can Decidueye, and I can always go for a Max Player. Overall, it's a pretty good situation right now. We now know we know the, the opponent's entire team, which is nice. Uh, three different Grass types, and it's a... <laughs> So I think, I think Lapras is good to, uh, I think we're going to protect with Lapras here actually, uh, with the idea being that they might, because of Taunt I can't do that, so we're just going to switch in Course Law. Rillaboom will do nothing to Course Law and Decidueye while being potentially dangerous to it. I, I'm not too, too concerned because I have Heatran, so. There's the Grassy Glide into Course Law. Does a fair amount. Oh, back to back, Grassy Glide's into Course Law, but Course Law's just gonna eat that up. Heatran's gonna go for the Heat Wave. And basically, Rillaboom and Decidueye are both going down right there, which means just Incineroar for my opponent. So now, the problem here for my opponent is They've got to do something about my Heatran, otherwise Heatran's going to go into it, or go all over it. But if they go for Heatran, I'm going to Strength Sap this Incineroar with my Corsola and get back some HP, and uh, while also lowering our attack. And the nice thing is, is although both of us do not uh, haven't used our Dynamax yet. There's going to be not much of a point of my opponent trying to fake out because fake out will not uh, flinch a Dynamax Pokemon, and he drains at full HP. So if this Incineroar Dynamaxes and goes for a Max Blade, he Tran is going to win. So the opponent gets their Dynamax first because they're faster. That's uh, pretty straightforward. Now I'm expecting my opponent to go for Corsola here. Because Corsola is probably going to be more of a threat to Incineroar. And the nice thing about Heatran is that Max Quake will give me special defense boosts. So on the off chance that this Incineroar does have special attacks, I don't have to worry too, too much about that. this Max Quake does to me in Cinnabar. So the Max Flare is going to go into Course Law, which makes sense. Course is going to tank that though, which is not good for my opponent, because Course Law is going to pretty much get almost all of its HP back with how Strength Sap works. So basically, um, you heal based off of your opponent's attack stat rather than a set amount of HP, and Cinnabar is a more physically oriented uh, Pokemon stat-wise, so Corsola is going to get a big boost in HP back from this. And on top of that, the, the target from Strafe Sap also takes a um, minus one attack drop. And as you can see there, Corsola went all the way back up to 164 out of 167, which is very good. So we're going to go for the Max Quake, and we're going to go for a Nightshade, and then this way if my opponent goes for Corsola again, then Corsola will either go down or survive and do some damage of itself. And that is a very, very uh, low amount of damage that Corsola has taken, which 
which just goes to show how much that attack drop is. Heatran's gonna give it another special defense boost on the off chance that that was a special fire type attack. So let's just see how much damage this Nightshade does to Incineroar. So a good amount. Incineroar gets a little bit of HP back with its leftovers, but uh, unfortunately for my opponent, it looks like it's pretty much all over from here. So we're gonna Nightshade again and Max Quake, and that should be game. Kinda wish to, um, on the off chance that I had Ally Switch so that I could have had Heatran take that and prop my Flashfire, but... Oh well, something to look into later down the road, I guess, for uh, future teams. So that's game right there. Sinora is going down. And that is a pretty good start to the battle type for today, I would say. Okay, so Tapu Fini, Incineroar, Metagross. Pouring on two, Cresselia. So I see already two things that can set Trick Room uh, and Galarian Zapdos. So, who do I want to bring here? Um, Corsola might be good in the back. Or do I want to bring Corsola? I'm gonna go Heatran with Zakat. Um, we'll bring Porcelain in the back, and I think we will bring. <sighs> I don't know if I want to bring Dracozolt or Tyranitar, because um, Dracozolt being able to hit Tapu Fini hard for massive stab damage for Bolt Beak would be nice. But on the same time, Tyranitar's Crunch for Metagross or Superpower and Rock Slide into Incineroar or Porygon 2 would be nice. Um, I gotta worry about that Zapdos. It's probably, eh. We'll bring Tyranitar. I feel I feel good about Tyranitar. Um, if I can get rid of Zapdos, Tyranitar might have a good spot here. Uh, the weakness policy on Tyranitar will mean that all of its attacks will do massive damage if it procs. So, I think with all of the new legendaries so far, I think I've battled teams with everything that was introduced with uh, the Crown Tundra. So, Shiny Metagross and Cineroar. Here is a problem. If Incineroar fakes me out, Heatran's probably taking a Mac break. And I know I probably can't get Heatran to knock out this Metagross with one shot. So. I think I'm going to protect. Turn one with Max Guard and protect Whimsicott as well. Unfortunately, it stalls out a turn of my own Dynamax, but if my opponent decides they want to Dynamax their Metagross, it keeps Heatran safe for a turn, and Incineroar would be able to hit through the tank just the maximum if Whimsicott is the turn. The nice thing is, is for a Focus Sash on this one, specifically in case my opponent goes for Whimsicott instead. So they are Dynamaxing, and this is going to be Metagross, because that looks like the uh, shiny uh, Metagross that was given out when only the Ruby Alpha Sapphire came out. So, yeah, it was Metagross. I will be able to survive a um, plus two max quake from uh, a weakness policy of Metagross, which is nice. And then I'm going to I'm gonna moonblast the Incineroar. 
with the idea being that... Okay, we're just gonna install at each other's Dynamax. That's, that's cool, too. Um, Prankster will not hit Dark Types with status moves, unfortunately. So... The fact that they met Max Guard, it makes me wonder if they're potentially a non weakness policy item. Which, if they are, that would be good to know. So let's find out what Incineroar is going to sub out with. Porygon 2. Okay. So I am going to actually risk key train here. Go for a max steel spike into Porygon 2, and I'm going to fake tears the Porygon 2 as well. Because Porygon 2 is extremely bulky with the heavy light. But with fake tears, this should do a lot of damage. And this looks like something uh, that is going to be able to sweep under Trick Room coming in. No, it's just it's a burn. Ah, oh, itchy nose. Itchy nose. So there's the fake tears into Porygon 2, which is going to have its special defense, and we're going to go over our max steel spike. Bye bye, Porygon 2. So that's a very good turn. Um, we're coming out of this with. Um, Heatran coming out at plus one. Porygon 2 didn't get to do anything. So now this Incineroar has a little bit of chip damage into it. I think what I'm going to do is... I think I'm going to do the same thing, actually. Um, no, I can't. Um, because Incineroar has its fake out available to it. Um, I think what we're going to do is we are going to... I think we're going to protect with Whimsicott, and I think we're going to bring in Corsola here. Because Corsola is very, very slow, which means it will be able to uh, go uh, pretty early on into Trick Room once it's sent. So if I want to Strength Sap this Incineroar, I can. And I'm expecting a Fake Out into the Corsola slot which we called right there. The Chrysalia was actually going for Icy Wind, which is okay. So now, if my opponent wants to set up Trick Room, they just made Corsola probably the fastest thing that will go for. So we're going to Strength Sap the Incineroar. I'm hoping what they're going to do is they're going to set in Metagross, and we are going to Fake Tears the Chrysalia, and see if we can blast it eventually. For big damage. So there's no switch from my opponent. They're going for the Icy Wind again. So little damage. Oh, first body just got rid of uh, the uh, Icy Wind for a couple of turns. Of course, it's going to eat this right up. And the Strength Sap is going to make that Darkest Lariat. So, yeah, of course, I'll just put itself back up in full HP. So, from there, we're going to gradually start Nightshading. And Whimsicott is going to go from Moonblast into Cresselia and start getting some damage. Opponent's going to switch out. Understandable. Of course, he's going to try to burn this thing now. Um, and so we're going to see what we can do. The nice thing is, I still have Heatran, which is significantly faster than uh, everything else. We do lose Whimsicott, but that's okay. Incineroar is going to take a grab. It's actually a good amount of damage that Incineroar takes this turn because of uh, Nightshade and Recoil off of the Flare Blitz. So Heatran is back out. We're going to 
gonna try to burn the Metagross, and we're gonna protect Heatran here. If I get that burn, that's a big attack drop into Metagross, and we already know before Incineroar got its attack drop, uh, Darkest Lariat is doing nothing to Corsola. So my opponent's gonna try to hit me for some damage. They do get an attack buff, which is annoying, but Cursed Body is just disgusting uh, with its disabling chances. So Course Lud is taking a lot of damage here, but it does get the burn. Metagross. So even though Metagross has that attack, uh, the power from its physical moves is reduced by half, which means I am going to take advantage of that burn in the Metagross and see if we can get rid of Incineroar with Heatran. It's a little under 50%. I think Heatran should be able to knock it out. Not quite, but that was a lot of damage, and the special defense drop is big. Metagross is going to go for the Stomping Tantrum into Heatran. With the Burn and the Shuckleberry, this should be nothing. Okay, I did more than I would have preferred, but it's still a good amount of damage. So there's the U-turn out of Incineroar, which means Cresselia is going to come back. But I'm not too, too worried about that. Corsola is going to get a lot of its HP back. Incineroar, ironically enough, was the biggest threat to Corsola, and now that it has left the field, Cresselia is here. So we're going to get some good HP back. Metagross won't take the attack drop off of Strength Sap, but... Corsola's got most of its HP. So now Corsola is going to Icy Wind the, or Nightshade, sorry, the Metagross, and Heatran is also going to go for an Earth Power here. So my opponent predicted that pretty good and went for the Protect. This makes me think the Trick Room is finally coming, so we will see. Nope, it's just an, another Icy Wind. So, that's okay. Curse Body at it again. <laughs> Man, I love this course Um So Corsola here is going to go for a Nightshade in the Metagross, and I think we are going to sub in Tyranitar. Um, if Metagross goes for a Stomping Tantrum into Tyranitar, that'll proc my own weakness policy, and at the moment Tyranitar should be faster than this Cresselia. It can't Icy win Tyranitar because it's currently disabled for, I think, three to four turns? Ironically, I, he, although I like this Corsola, I don't use Disable often as a tactic, and the only reason why I have Curse Body on Corsola is just because I don't want the armor uh, lowering my defense. So there's the Stomping Tantrum. Now, this Cresselia is in for a very bad time because I have a Cluster Crunch, and Corsola is just going to gradually chip away at Metagross, and my idea is... I'm going to chip away at Metagross with Nightshade, crunch at the Cresselia. If one of them switches in into Incineroar, both of them will have more than enough damage to get rid of them. So there's the Nightshade locked in, and we're going to go Crunch. I could go Rock Slide, but I think we'll just go Crunch because both of them are in a position where they're going to both take massive damage uh, from either of my moves. Cresselia is going for the Helping Hand in the Metagross. Um, I don't think that would do too much. Oh, I'm wrong. It took out uh, Tyranitar, but that's okay. Because between the Burn and Nightshade, I think Metagross is very, very... Yeah, Metagross is going to go down. Uh, so... Actually, I think it's going down next turn to burn, regardless. So, we're going to protect Heatran, and Corsola is going to go for my chain. So. 
Ironically, uh, no, I'll take it about it. Um, Metagross is something like base 70 speed and Tyranto is base 61. So what I should have done was had um, Tyranitar uh, protect or had Corsa Icy Wind. Oh no, that wouldn't have worked actually because of the clear body. So Corsa is actually going to be taking this. Curse Body is going to proc and get rid of uh, Meteor Mash. We're going to get from this Nightshade into the Cresselia slot. Cresselia is going to take some chip from the sand, so it's Corsola. Corsola is very, very low, unfortunately, but Corsola is hanging in there uh, as expected. So Cresselia's Icy Wind is no longer uh, disabled. So Heatran is going to come in here, or Incineroar is going to come in here, not Heatran. What I'm thinking of doing here is we're just gonna heat wave now. Um, we're gonna heat wave and nightshade. I might lose course light here if Heatran gets faked out. But Heat or er, Incineroar is gonna go down. There's the Nightshade into Cresselia. Oh, Cresselia's got a Citrus Berry. Come on, we can make it. So there goes Incineroar now. It's literally just Cresselia versus Corsola and Heatran. Is winding down. We don't miss the heat wave, which is big. So there's the psychic into Horse Law, unfortunately. The sandstorm ends this turn as well. Now, part of me wants to steal me into Cresselia, but part of me knows that that will ruin this if I miss, because you take the recoil damage off the steel, steel beam after. Oh, okay, here we go. Very smart of my opponent to hold off on to the Moonlight uh, until the very end. So let's see what we can do here. Psychic's gonna go into Heatran. That was a crit. So in theory, we should be able to live another uh, Psychic. That we did. And we're gonna risk it and go for the Steel Beam because Heatwave will not... Heatwave will not take out... Uh, Cresselia, but Steel Beam might. So let's see how this goes. So Cresselia did faint, but Steel Beam uh, recoil did take me out. But because it, I, I, so the recoil counts as a loss for me. But oh well, it was a very close match. I can't really say much about it. I thought the recoil, the way how recoil worked, it would have counted as a win, but apparently off Steel Beam it doesn't. It might be like Explosion. But anyways, very close battle. Um, very good battle, I would say. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that one, and I will see you next time. Thank you.